Okay, come here, come here, come here, come here. Okay, so this is our mining GPU that we're using for gaming in spite of its complete lack of any video outputs. But you've seen this before. And the last time we left you guys, we weren't recommending these things, even though they're like 75 bucks for the equivalent of a GTX 1060, because the only drivers we had for them were modified by some Chinese driver modification team, and we had no way of knowing exactly what was inside them. But today, all of that changes. First and foremost, we are going to manually modify NVIDIA's drivers ourselves, making this completely safe to use. Second, while we're at it, we're gonna kill NVIDIA's telemetry that they build into their drivers. And third, we are gonna run this in SLI with one of these, which is like, what? What? Running a real gaming GPU with a mining one in SLI? They're not even the same part number. Oh, and while we're at it, the 1060 doesn't even support SLI. But we're gonna do it. And you know what else we're gonna do? Tell you about our sponsor, Glasswire. With Glasswire, you can instantly see your current and past network activity. You can detect malware and block badly behaving apps on your PC or Android device. And you can get it for 25% off at the link in the video description with offer code Linus. Okay, so here's the situation right now. We're not quite starting from scratch, but pretty close. So we've already disabled driver signing and you can see how to do that in our previous video here where we used the, uh, the modified Chinese driver. But other than that, we're looking at a pretty bone stock configuration here. So our P106 mining GPU is installed in our system, but the drivers for it are not loaded in any way. We're in a, in a completely blank state and we are running entirely off of the onboard graphics that are built into our CPU here. So Anthony's back. Hi. Uh. Before we go any further, I want to lay out what our ideal scenario would be here because in our last video, we weren't just relying on a driver of unknown origins, it was also a little bit on the older side. So in a perfect world, we would want our P106 mining card here to behave exactly like a GTX 1060 because hardware-wise, they're the same thing. So that means gaming support, compute support, and even NBank video encoding support, and all of that while being able to run the very latest drivers. However, we've run into some challenges and we are gonna have to make a few compromises here. So, what do we got? Well, first of all, we won't be able to run on the latest driver, at least not right now. The way it works right now, it, we're just getting a code 43 error every time. So, either NVIDIA has changed something or they patched it or whatever. Either way, we're stuck with 416.34. Aside from that, as far as I know, it's not possible to get NVIDIA to work. So. so you're stuck with quick sync, which fortunately you're gonna have to have because you're running your onboard graphics anyway in order to even get a display output from this thing, mm -hmm. or X264. So with that out of the way, Anthony's going to start by downloading our own fresh version of that 416 series driver, and then taking the Chinese one and the NVIDIA one and comparing what the difference is between them so that we can replicate the modifications that the Chinese team has made that allows the driver to be installed without copying over anything that could be nefariously hidden inside it. So I'm using Notepad++, and the reason for that is it's free, it's pretty great actually. It's got a huge number of features, including this compare feature, which we can access via this plugins section here. We just type in compare, uh, I've already installed it, so it's in here. But yeah, once you have that, you just go to, you load up your first file, go to plugins, compare, set as first to compare. I've already done that. Now I will load up the other one, which is this Chinese driver. Plugins, compare, compare. So here we have a full listing of everything that is different between these two drivers. So as we can see, these lines here have been modified. So where it used to say section 110, it now says section 108, which is actually the same. If you look at these device IDs, 1C06 is actually the GTX 1060. 1C07 is our P106. They have different sections in the vanilla driver, but in the Chinese driver, they do not. That is the primary thing we're going to be changing here. Okay, now the final one of these uh, sections here, we'll notice that it actually says that it's 109 instead of 110. It's dropped down a number. The same is true over here. So we'll just 
follow here. So it'll be 107 for each. Basically what we're doing is we're copying the same config from our 1C06, which is our GTX 1060. So we want section 107 for all of these things. Now what we're doing here is basically just tricking the driver into thinking it's compatible. We're not actually changing any of the functional files of the driver installation, is that correct? That's right. And if we go down through the rest of the comparison here, there is nothing different, really. So then it's possible that our Chinese driver was totally clean. Yeah, possible. But I mean, we don't know about the EXEs. The INF is perfectly fine. We can make some additional changes while we're here though. Telemetry. Isn't it convenient that they just listed under NV telemetry? Yeah. For those not familiar, telemetry is a feature of a software or a driver that reports back on your usage to the manufacturer. And a lot of the time, this is stuff that you can opt out of, but a lot of the time, it's just baked right in. So there you go. We passed our compatibility check. Yep. Let's go ahead and install it. Of course, we do not want GeForce Experience. Also don't care about 3D Vision because we don't actually have anything that we can connect it to. And hopefully we will get the same exact thing we got the other day, but we did it for ourselves on a fresh driver. Hey, there we go. All right. So that's it. If nothing else, we now can say confidently that if you pick up one of these mining cards and use this method on this particular driver, you will be able to play games. Mm. Hard. Yeah, that, uh, that monitor doesn't really have a shield on its, yeah. The biggest criticism we had last time yeah. is that we didn't actually show the Intel integrated and how poorly that performed. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, uh, it would be worse than this. <laughs> a lot worse. Yeah. This is Deus Ex Mankind Divided running at 1080p at greater than eight frames per second. So it's working. <laughs> now the thing is, even though we're having trouble moving on to the latest drivers, which would give us support for things like, oh, I mean, I guess FreeSync doesn't matter because you'd be, you could actually have FreeSync running off of Intel's onboard graphics. Yeah, Oh, okay. you could. Never mind. Depending on whether or not your onboard graphics supports FreeSync. Okay, but still, there are good reasons to be running the latest drivers. Now, we're not saying it's impossible. We're just saying that when we applied this same method to the latest drivers, even checking line by line, we weren't successful. So it might just be down to people who are a little bit better versed in their driver modification wizardry to figure out what the additional things that NVIDIA has changed, whether just through the course of changing things to make them better or to specifically block this in order to make that work. Either way, at the very least, using a slightly older driver, we have a working gaming system on the cheap. But that's not where we stop today. For our next trick, we're gonna run this thing in SLI. Now, we're still gonna have to deal with that same driver compatibility limitation because one of the cards in our system is one of these P106 mining cards, but what it at least demonstrates is that from a proof of concept standpoint, this can work. So you might think that this process is as simple as throwing a real GTX 1060 into the system and then again, forcing our driver to install. Remember, it's an unsigned driver now, so you gotta do that process manually. But as we're about to discover, it did not. It did not. Oh, hi, Mark. Whatever, the point is there's no SLI option in here whatsoever. So now what? Some kind of weird thing off the tech power up form? Yeah. What are, what are we doing? So it's a program called uh, Different SLI Auto. It's currently in the downloads folder, uh, but you guys will have to download and extract that for yourselves. And we don't actually want to run the program. Okay, that would be too easy. Yes, it uh, used to work, but it doesn't anymore. So, so. so you'll want to go to C, Windows, System32, Driver Store, and now we want to sort it by date. We want to copy the uh, NVLDDMKM. Uh, it's the driver itself. See this here, just <laughs> Yeah, I couldn't find it earlier either. Okay, copy it's like it. just in a C of NV. Paste it into the different SLI auto folder. Now you'll want to open up a hex editor. I downloaded HXD, it's free. Should be there on the desktop. Okay. Uh, you got it. You want to search for the, str for the uh, string of uh, values 75050F BA. Oh, I already had it there. Okay, cool. There it is. So we want to change that. So you'll want to go to the beginning of that and type in. Yeah. C7432400000000. <clears throat> <laughs> 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 
<laughs> the hard part's over, okay? So we want to uh, go back to the uh, folder you got that driver from. We want to take the folder name itself, copy that, and this is probably also auto already auto-populated, but if you go back to the different SLI auto folder, yep. right-click and install.cmd, go to edit, see where it says the NB, disk, INFs, that kind of stuff there? You want to nice. replace that in every, in every in every instance. So you can use oh. the replace function in Notepad for that. Yeah. All right, then. so then we want to restart into safe mode. Oh, lordy. Okay, so is that working? Yeah, sure. All right, next you're going to want to go into that folder again, different SLI auto, and run install.cmd as a minute. Well, I guess it's the same thing in safe mode anyway. You know what? Let's just do it. Okay. Boom! Reboot now for changes to take effect. Yep. So what have we done here? Sign the driver. Really? Supposedly. It doesn't actually work. Oh, okay. Um, that's something that we can do though. Um, something that requires a lot more butzing around that okay. we don't really want to do right now. It does that, copies the uh, modified driver that we changed the bits around in yep. to the uh, proper locations in Windows. Yep. And well, that's really about it. And then just to clarify for the viewers out there, changing those hex values, have we done anything unsafe to our system? Have we potentially compromised it? Not compromised, no. But Who told us to change those values? Well, it's actually a guy on the Tech Power Up forums okay. by the name of um, Pretentious. Yeah, there we go. That's the name. Yeah, he's got a little script that he runs that takes about an hour or two to find where exactly the string that we found yeah. is in each driver release, and he just updates it on the forum. It's pretty great. Basically what it does yeah. is it disables the check for SLI as far as motherboard compatibility and you know inter-GPU compatibility. So to be clear, you guys aren't going to be running an RTX 2080 Ti and uh, a GTX 1030 in SLI, at least not to any positive effect. But over here, in a case where we have two GPUs that we know are identical other than NVIDIA deciding they're not, our expectation is that we would actually be able to achieve an improvement in performance. So here it is. The SLI option is there in the driver. We're going to go ahead and enable it. And bippity schloppity. No. No. Oh, our keyboard light just went off. As it turns out, that SLI mod will not work with the P106. Unfortunately, whatever, maybe it's the fact that it doesn't have outputs. Maybe it's the fact that they have two different VBIOSes that are, you know, for whatever reason right now, it does not work. If we could force the card to take a different VBIOS, that might work, but I haven't been able to get that to work either. I mean, we can still run. GTX 1060s in SLI, I guess that's still fun. All right, so what we've done here is we've manually installed our driver again, moved our HDMI cable over to this GPU, and we're gonna go ahead and enable our other device, which got automatically disabled somewhere along the way. It's kind of like a precautionary measure. Hey! SLI enabled on the GTX 1060. Where's my Deus Ex at now, beaches? I'm actually not sure what the scaling would be like here. Now, the thing here is that there's nothing particularly amazing about running graphics cards in a multi-GPU configuration without a bridge running between them. In fact, AMD has been doing it this way for several generations now. NVIDIA, though, has stuck to their guns saying that the available bandwidth over the PCI Express slots is not enough to handle the inter-card communication and has even gone as far as to upgrade the original SLI link to the new NVLink standard that you'll see on their RTX cards. With that said, even though we won't be able to speak to necessarily, um, you know, micro stuttering and how this solution affects something like that, we can see if we could at least get an FPS improvement with this configuration, and we'll know pretty shortly here. Yeah, the benchmark only takes 90 seconds. Hey, wow! That's a pretty nice little improvement there, isn't it? Yeah. So, once again, our experimenting with NVIDIA graphics cards video does come with some caveats. This isn't necessarily a configuration we'd recommend. SLI is in most cases um, not as good an option as simply getting a single higher powered graphics card. So I don't even necessarily disagree with NVIDIA disabling SLI by default on their lower end cards. It's just something that was 
kind of fun to do and interesting to show you guys just how simple it is for manufacturers to lock down and or enable functionality, at least from a sort of hex editor perspective. Now the QC that would actually go into ensuring that this would be an adequate solution for their users, that's a completely separate story and maybe part of the reason that manufacturers won't allow functionality that they otherwise could. But uh, I'll let you guys be the judge of exactly why it is that this is locked out. You guys can leave a comment down below. You know what else you can do down below? Check out our sponsor. FreshBooks is the super simple to use small business accounting solution for freelancers and the self-employed. It's a simple way to be more productive, more organized, and to get paid faster. You can create and send professional looking invoices in less than 30 seconds. You can set up online payments with just a couple of clicks to get paid up to four days faster. You can see when your client has seen your invoice to put an end to the guessing games. And if you have any trouble, you can reach out to FreshBooks' award-winning customer support where you won't get any phone trees or escalations. Nothing like that, just answers. So visit freshbooks.com slash tech tips and enter Linus Tech Tips in the how did you hear about us section to get your 30 day free trial. So thanks for watching guys. If you disliked this video, you can hit that button. But if you liked it, hit like, get subscribed, or maybe consider checking out where to buy the stuff we featured at the link in the video description. Also down there is our merch store, which has cool shirts like this one and not yours. Not and mine. our community forum, which you should totally join.